Since 1985, Continuum has had the tremendous fortune to explore new ideas in music in Toronto, where the trees meet the water. Toronto is home to many indigenous people from across Turtle Island and has been a site of human activity for more than 15,000 years. We recognize that we are here because this land was colonized. Indigenous communities and allies struggle against the ongoing consequences of our colonial system. This land is the territory of the Petun First Nations, the Seneca, and most recently the Mississaugas of the Credit River. The territory was the subject of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and Confederacy of the Ojibwe and Allied Nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. We are enormously grateful for the generosity of all Indigenous people who share this land with us and allow us to live and work here as uninvited guests. Welcome to Continuum's 25th episode of Press Play, our web series that dives deep into extraordinary works of contemporary music in both their performance and in informative conversation with the artists who create the work. My name is Joyce Toe, and I am the host of Press Play and a co-curator for this episode. As many of you know or can guess from my accent, I'm Australian and had recently moved to Canada in the last two years. With this co-curation opportunity, I wanted to use this space to share a couple of Australian composers with you. This episode, we are featuring Kate Moore, who is an internationally acclaimed composer currently based in the Netherlands. Kate Moore was awarded the Matthias Vermeulen Prize in 2017, one of the most prestigious Dutch composition prizes. Moore holds a doctorate from the Sydney University Conservatorium of Music, a master's from the Royal Conservatory of The Hague, majoring in composition and electroacoustic composition. When I first came across Kate Moore's music, I was really put into a trance. When I've experienced their music live, it has always struck me with this impact that is much like tidal waves pushing and pulling. And Velvet is one of these pieces. Velvet is one of these pieces that is gentle yet steadfast. What I like to call gracefully badass. <laughs> And what I find most interesting about Kate's music is how the writing appears quite simple on the page, yet it is really able to highlight the musician's conviction and dedication to their craft. Velvet really captures the drama of sound to physical gesture. And I think it really challenges the audience to not only listen with presence to the performers, but also to really witness the physical work, the mental work, the collaborative work, the work of the performers on stage. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy. With Velvet, what was your key inspiration or, or intention behind the work? Yeah, sure. So, um, uh, I mean, I really love the sound of the cello and, and the cello is often, this tone is often described as like velvet. <laughs> uh, yeah. And um, and somehow associating the cello with, with red velvet is a thing. Like I think of red, like the, the, the inner lining of a, of a cello case is often red velvet. And like, yes, I, I, I think of something about theater from a very young age I was really attracted to to theater but like the red curtains are red, also velvet this material somehow has some sort of um it's a very tactile quality but also has a lot of sort of associations with, with memory and especially to do with performing and theater and cello um but I'm also fascinated by um drawing a, a drawing textile like um textile that's depicted in paintings especially for example Leonardo da Vinci he did he made many um uh, sketches of, of or, or like a studies of, of textile um for simply for the for the fluidity of the folds and the richness of, and the contours of, of folded material mm. um and I found that fascinating sort of the, the contours of folded material in a still frame 
Um, so that, that those were visual images that I that, that I had in mind while I while I was thinking about the piece. But somehow, because it's it's sort of like a sort of synesthetic thing, I think, with memory and and uh, association, that I think of um, theatre and performance, and especially that sort of rings true with my collaboration with with Ashley Bathgate, who was the who premiered the piece, and Lisa Moore, of course. Um, that that they they're, they're both very they're both amazing performers and they're very close to me in, 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 certain, in many ways. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's an association, memory association, the color and the feel and the tangibility of the material. Yes, that's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. And uh, you talked about Leonardo da Vinci, the, the draping, the manner in which the draping of material is depicted uh, and this juxtaposition of movement but captured in stillness and I wonder um, what your perspective on time in relation to your, your composition what what role does time play in your composition well I think I mean in uh I think that the composition is the art of time. <laughs> it's like the key critical um, uh, part. I can't think of the right word today. Um, but, but I mean, you have melody and harmony and, and, and rhythm and texture and timbre and orchestration and all of these aspects of music. But the, the key aspect is, is time and the way things are placed. Um, so as a composer, I'm always thinking about that, but it's also interesting because of course my art is working on a, on a page in the same way that a painter would paint on a still frame. My, my time is still, um, which is the difference between what I do and what a performer does who performs it in, in real time, in time, in, in time itself. So I imagine how time works and then the experience is lived through the performer of time in, 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 in real, in real space. And I also find that interesting, the way in which, for example, I mean, a piece is structured uh, proportionally, for example, or through rhythm and duration, that on a page, it's, uh, you can notate it perfectly, with like a perfectly measured thing. Yet when it's performed, it's, it's always changing because it's interpreted in a human way and in a way of feel, so that you feel the, the proportion. And I find that discrepancy really interesting. So it's, again, it's, it's similar. It goes back to the, the depiction of cloth in a still frame, the depiction of time on a still page and how it comes to life in the performance. Yeah, and this, this, this what you're describing, I, I wonder if you then also think about this relationship between sound to physical gesture. Because what I find when I've experienced Velvet, uh, people playing Velvet live, um, or, or even watching Lisa Moore and Asher Bathgate perform this, I find that there's, you know, there's this kind of sense of drama from sound to gesture, and it really pushes uh, audiences to really witness them as performers. And like you said, like your, your time is still um, until it's, and then it's, you know, and it's lived through the performer. So I wonder if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting. It's, it's very, very complicated. I mean, I think like being a musician is all about the interpretation of, of sound and gesture in, in such a way that, um, that, it, that, it, that it has drama, that it communicates. You know, so like, I often think of a score as being like a play this is something that I think about really a lot, um, uh, even, even despite the fact that I don't use language, I use it music language um, in, and, the, and the subtleties of gesture, the subtleties of tone quality it has emotional intent and, and communicates in that way with the audience, but also with the, the other notes, <laughs> that they all relate to each other. <laughs> you have a little conversation between notes. <laughs> Sweet, oh, a little note. So I have a little conversation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so just one last quick question. And this is just maybe a little bit of a fun one. I feel that many different corners of our lives really inspire or fuel our creativity as artists. So like for me, that perfect 
cup of of tea that I brew on a cold day can really inspire you know just a I don't know, like a, a bounce in, in me wanting to play my scales. I don't, I don't know, like this, sure. or like I nail that hard bar in, um, in a piece of music and, I, and it's akin to that joy you feel when you finally relax in a bathtub after a long day. You know, I feel like the, you know, there are ways in which our creativity is fueled by everyday context. Uh, but I wonder, what do you find you can express in music that you can't in everyday context? Uh, yeah, I guess. Um, well, I mean, yeah, music is uh, music is in, in exists out of reality in a way, in a funny sort of not reality. I don't know. It, it, in a different dimension. <laughs> uh, I, I, it's like going into. I mean, when you're a child, you you play games, right? And you go into this fantasy world. And I guess maybe a little bit of that is saved when, as an adult, through 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 music and creativity. It's 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 imaginary it's imaginary it's not it's a, it's imagining a an an a story or another reality or a fantasy world or or like a feel or expressing feelings and, and emotions that you can't really express day to day in a safe place <laughs> safe way <laughs> i guess or like yeah, to explore things to explore how how um how how feelings interact or explore colors through sound um, and where where it takes you, yeah, yeah, um, into yeah. this very colorful and exciting creative space, which is outside normal. <laughs>
Thank you for watching episode 25 of Press Play. Thank you, Alison Rich and Jackie Lung for just your wonderful playing. And a big thank you to the Continuum team, Ryan Scott and Christina Volpini for the support and opportunity to co-curate. The next episode of Press Play broadcasts Thursday, June 23rd at 7 p.m. with Susurus by Connor Donetto, performed by Aizel Tagizara on violin and electronics by Dennis Patterson. Visit our website www.continuummusic.ca to learn more about all our upcoming Press Play episodes and other projects, to follow us on social media, and to sign up on our email list. And if you like what we are doing, click the support button and make a donation now. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.